Welcome to the Three Minute Drill, your home for college football, where we go around the nation, conference to conference, and talk to the true insiders, the student beat reporters for each campus newspaper, to find out what's popping in college football. I'm your host, Mitchell Karasik, and the BCS was announced this week for the first time this season, and it pretty much fell right into form. Number one, Ohio State. Number two, USC. Number three, Michigan. And it was pretty easy to come to that conclusion with Florida losing this week. You might want to flip-flop USC and Michigan. You can make an argument either way. On to the weekend notebook. One incident stood out. It's certainly the University of Miami-Florida International game. Unfortunately, one of the biggest brawls you will see in college football. And as ugly as it could possibly be, this is something that cannot continue. And we will certainly delve into it. It is really, really a horrific incident. Larry Coker certainly might lose his job over it at the end of the year if he wasn't going to already. And the Heisman this week, a lot of developments went on. And it wasn't necessarily because there were such great on-the-field accomplishments. It was more, unfortunately, because Adrian Peterson breaks his collarbone more than likely out for the year. That eliminates him from the Heisman Trophy race. And Garrett Wolf, only 25 yards rushing versus Western Michigan, more than likely drops his candidacy as well for the Heisman Trophy. We now go to the phones and we check in at USC number two overall in the BCS with Alex Delanian of the Daily Trojan. And Alex, what's popping with the Trojans? Well, it was kind of a relief week for the Trojans. I mean, there was a little wonder about what was going to happen with the BCS with every week apparently somebody else jumping us for number two. Because of the computer polls liking us a lot more than some of the other teams, it was nice to see the 6-0 start pay off. A lot of people were a little relieved. A lot of people said they didn't care, but it was in the back of people's minds even though they wouldn't acknowledge it. And at number two, really the only controversy right now is whether USC should be two or should it be Michigan. And that, that's really the only controversy. Is Pete Carroll bringing it up? What did he say? Is he focusing in on it? Or having been there before, it's just kind of old hag. Well, Pete's theory has always been that the computers will do what they want. They just have to play their games. He kind of like, he tries to avoid it, lets it kind of play out by itself because it's treated them well in the past. What's going to happen, what, a lot of the criticism that's been put on USC has been because of their, their schedule. They've played a lot of uh, the lower end of the Pac-10 teams. They've struggled with them. If they can make it out of the, the last part of the schedule live with Notre Dame, Oregon, Cal, and UCLA, then they'll prove that, that they've been able to survive that part of the schedule. If they're still undefeated and, and Obviously, Michigan or Ohio State will have to lose down the road. It won't matter because USC will have shown sure. that they've, they've survived their schedule. Tough, though, matchups coming up with Notre Dame and certainly Cal, which will probably determine the Pac-10 for USC. A lot on the line, and we'll see whether or not USC can step up and hold that number two overall spot in the BCS. Alex, great job. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for having me. We welcome in Brian Bainham from the Daily Californian, and, Brian, what's popping with the Golden Bears? I guess you could say there's a lot of confidence right now around uh, the Cal program. Uh, basically, the year didn't get off to the start everyone wanted, and that kind of uh, threw, threw Cal off the map. You could say they lost to Tennessee. But um, since then, six straight wins, and the team is um, team's feeling pretty good about themselves, I would say. It's been 27 years since they've won in Washington State. And they did it this year. I, I don't know why it was 27 years or what took so long, but obviously it was. They got a big victory. They're starting to get some monkeys off their back here as they move forward. Looks like Cal's got an excellent chance here, really, to win the Pac-10. Well, I think they do, and I think you mentioned the, the uh, Washington State streak. The team isn't really aware of any of that, and, you know, they haven't been to the Rose Bowl in 48 years. Um, you know, Cal is not traditionally a program that has been associated with a lot of success. I think the players on this team just don't really know about that much, and they're pretty ignorant of all the, the hoopla, which is probably going to be a good thing as they head down the stretch here because um, there will be those increased expectations as people you know, look to the November 18 game with, uh, with USC. Um, so I think they're just you know, focusing on playing the game and, and keeping everything in the present because if they start worrying about the historical implications, it uh, might get a little overwhelming. And you brought up a good point, USC. You can't help but to look down the calendar and see that on November 18th, Cal at USC, it looks like that's clearly going to determine who wins the Pac-10. 
Well, I think it is. I mean, USC has the Oregon game the week before, and and um, that could, you know, those three teams I think are still in it. Um, I think it will determine the Pac-10, and, and the way USC has been playing, I think Cal should go into that game with a lot of confidence um, and that they can come away with a win and not think of it as maybe knocking off USC, but, uh, you know, have confidence in, in what they can do. And, you know, USC has looked pretty vulnerable the last couple of weeks, and I think if Cal plays the way they're capable of, um, they'll should be able to come away with uh, a victory. Thanks, Brian. We'll talk to you again next week. And when we return, we will talk to our on-the-field reporter at the University of Miami, Rudy Tarmaccio from the Daily Hurricane, and find out more on the brawl that took place this weekend. This is the Three Minute Drill. the hoopla, which is probably going to be a good thing as they head down the stretch here because um, there will be those increased expectations as people, you know, look to the November 18 game with uh, with USC. Um, so I think they're just, you know, focusing on playing the game and, and keeping everything in the present because if they start worrying about the historical implications, it uh, might get a little overwhelming. And you brought up a good point, USC. You can't help but to look down the calendar and see that on November 18th, Cal at USC, it looks like that's clearly going to determine who wins the Pac-10. Well, I think it is. I mean, USC has the Oregon game the week before, and and um, that could, you know, those three teams I think are still in it. Um, I think it will determine the Pac-10, and, and the way USC has been playing, I think Cal should go into that game with a lot of confidence um, and that they can come away with the win and not think of it as maybe knocking off USC, but, uh, you know, have confidence in, in what they can do and, you know, USC has looked pretty vulnerable the last couple of weeks, and I think if Cal plays the way they're capable of, um, they should be able to come away with uh, a victory. Thanks, Brian. We'll talk to you again next week. And when we return, we will talk to our on-the-field reporter at the University of Miami, Rudy Tarmaccio, from the Daily Hurricane, and find out more on the brawl that took place this weekend. This is the 3-Minute Drill. <laughs> 